Deep in a mysterious fog hill where ancient secrets lurk, we find ourselves face to face with some seriously spooky creatures, Asmodeus, who's basically insanity in the flesh, and the beast of greed. These guys are stuck here, thanks to some mystical seals keeping their wicked powers in check. But then they hear some troubling news. Word on the demon street is that the peacock demon is toast. Asmodeus, being the cunning and ruthless demon that he is, isn't too worried about his old foe Yishuan. They've tangled before and Asmodeus isn't convinced Yishuan is all that tough. So he hatches a plan to nab the super-powerful Qi Lin, which he figures will give him the upper hand. He tells his three trusty demon generals to go after Yishuan. Meanwhile, down in the demon ranks, things are getting a bit shaky. They start to scatter, not sure what to do, when out of nowhere, the Flame Axis, also known as Jing Xuan, shows up with some other Elemental Axis buddies. They sense something's up with the seals that keep those primal demons in check, and they're seriously freaked out by the missing Peacock Demon and the fact that the Fire Seal, which got messed up three years ago when Yishuan got hurt, now has a big old hole in it. The Elemental Axis folks are scratching their heads big time, wondering how the Peacock Demon managed to break free. But one smart cookie among them, a guy, figures out something, the Peacock can split itself into pieces, and maybe it used that trick to sneak out through the gap. Just when they're chewing on this idea, a messenger bird swoops in with some seriously surprising news. The Peacock Demon got taken down. And guess who they think did it? Yishuan himself, the male Axis dude thinks. He's determined to fix up the messed up fire seal, and he tells the others to get back to their jobs. Meanwhile, in the spooky mist, Yi Xuan and his trusty sidekick, a duck named Su Guan, are on a super dangerous journey deep into Fog Hill. They're hoping to rescue Yi Xuan's mom and a dear friend. They've got their eyes on a far-off goal, but then Yi Xuan's neck starts hurting like crazy. Somewhere else in the foggy land, there's this gal named An and her trusty buddy Huo Xing. They come upon a peaceful lake, but Huo Xing, who's always on the lookout, tells On to watch out for sneaky demons hiding in the shadows. An's got her own special powers and she can feel that the powerful Qi Lin is close by. So as she's filling her water bottle, something totally unexpected spooks her, and she makes a run for it. Out of nowhere, two seriously mean demons show up, charging at them with bad intentions. But Hu Xing isn't scared at all. She jumps into action and fights these two fiends like a total pro. She takes down the crab-like one with some slick moves and nails the other one with a perfectly aimed arrow from her bow. An's feeling pretty relieved, but then, out of the blue, this guy named Corner Shadow pops up from the shadows. Hu Xing tries to whack him with her bow, but he's tricky. He uses water to shield himself and gets up close to Hu Xing, showing off some fancy moves with a fan. Blades shoot out from his fan, sending Hu Xing flying backward. It's clear that Corner Shadow is one tough opponent. Realizing they need to work together, Hu Xing and An come up with a plan. An gets her crossbow ready while both of them go after Corner Shadow from different directions. Hu Xing charges in to make a big move, but Corner Shadow surprises her by blocking her attack with his mouth. Then, quick as lightning, Corner Shadow launches an electric attack that shocks both Hu Xing and An, leaving them stunned. But just when Corner Shadow thinks he's about to win, Yishuan shows up to the rescue. He smacks Corner Shadow hard, sending him tumbling. Corner Shadow's still got his sights on the Qi Lin though and goes charging at Yi Xuan. They start duking it out, trading punches and all, but Yi Xuan starts taking the lead and hits Corner Shadow with a bunch of attacks that break Corner Shadow's fan. Corner Shadow figures out that he's up against the Flame Axis Yi Xuan. He thinks he's got the upper hand because he can control water. So he was crashing into Yi Xuan with a big watery attack. But Yi Xuan uses his fiery powers to conjure a massive flame that instantly turns all that water into steam. Corner Shadow gets scorched and beaten, and he goes back to his basic form and falls to the ground. Yi Xuan gets ready to finish Corner Shadow off, but then he feels a sudden pain in his neck. Corner Shadow takes advantage of the distraction and gets all charged up, ready to explode. In a huge burst of water, everyone gets swept away. Meanwhile, somewhere else, the fifth elder is hurt real bad. The first and second elders rush to help him, looking all worried. They give him some special potion with demonic power to try and heal him. When Yishuan wakes up, he realizes that An is missing, but he still has the Qi Lin. And right next to him, Hu Xing starts moving and he sees a weird mark on her shoulder. She gets startled and thinks he's a bad guy, so she gives him a hard slap and moves away. In the middle of all this confusing stuff, another demon shows up. He's got a grudge against Yishuan and says he's been training for 10 whole years just to get revenge. But Yishuan has no idea who this vengeful demon is. The demon makes a move on Yi Xuan, waving his sword around, and his magic orb splits into a bunch of attacks. But Yi Xuan gets the upper hand. He's super skilled and manages to disarm the demon and hit back with his fiery powers. 
But then Yi Xuan gets a sharp pain in his neck, and it throws him off balance. The demon takes advantage of this and kicks him away. Suddenly, Yi Xuan starts remembering stuff. We get a flashback to 10 years ago when he was the guardian of the mysterious Fog Hill. Back then, there were these guys, Wang and his buddy Wei, who were trying to escape. But Yi Xuan was dead set on stopping them from causing trouble. Wei looks really weak and like he's about to kick the bucket. Wang thinks it's because Wei hasn't had any human blood for a while. Wang is desperate to save his friend, but Yi Xuan easily fends off his attacks. Right when Yi Xuan is about to finish them off, Wei steps in, trying to save Wang. But he pays a big price and gets thrown back. Wang is furious and charges at Yi Xuan, who makes a sword out of flames and chops off Wei's arm. Back in the present, Wang tries to justify what they did as a fight for survival. Yi Xuan gets ready to face off against Wang, but for some reason, his powers just aren't working. Wang smacks him really hard, sending Yi Xuan crashing into a huge rock. Wang mocks Yi Xuan, saying he's not as strong as he used to be 10 years ago and that he's a big letdown. Wang shoots a bunch of deadly spikes from his tail, but just in time, Hu Xing jumps in to protect Yi Xuan and blocks the spikes. Unfortunately, in all the chaos, she drops her bag with some special pills. Hu Xing figures out that she got hit by one of those venomous spikes and now she's poisoned. Wang grabs her bag and realizes it smells like the Qi Lin, so he quickly eats the pills. Yi Xuan tries to use his special powers, but there's something weird in his neck that's stopping him. Wang gets ready to finish Yi Xuan off, but suddenly, green flames shoot at him. And that's when the flame axis, Jing Xuan, shows up. Meanwhile, An wakes up and finds herself with Su Guan, her trusty duck friend. She tells Su Guan that she can't remember stuff, and she thinks it's because she got sick three years ago. An's on a mission to find Yi Xuan and the Qi Lin to get some answers. Even though Su Guan looks like an ordinary duck, he believes in An and tells her she should get out of the dangerous fog hill while she can. An's not so sure about Su Guan's abilities and questions what he can do. But then, to her surprise, Su Guan reveals that he's actually a super wise sage, though he's currently sealed. They decide to team up and go look for Yi Xuan. Meanwhile, Jing Xuan faces off with Yi Xuan, grabs him, and accuses him of their mom's death. Turns out, they're brothers. Yi Xuan says their mom is still alive and explains that he's on a mission to rescue her by swapping the Qi Lin at the Aegis Tower. Jing Xuan finds this hard to believe and punches Yi Xuan in the face, which accidentally triggers some flame seeds that bring back memories of their shared past. Inside the Fire Clan, we see Yi Xuan showing off his amazing skills. He's better than all the other boys and can control fire like a pro. He aces a test and gets top honors, and he's super happy to tell his mom. She rewards him with a fancy meal. While they're enjoying their food, Yi Xuan brings up a big question. How can someone get really good at controlling fire quickly? But his mom knows what's really on his mind. He's worried about his struggling brother. She gives him an important lesson. There are no easy shortcuts to mastering fire. Yi Xuan brings up this thing called the Baron Flame, which is supposed to give you instant fire skills. But his mom says it's just a made-up story. She tells him about all the people from their clan who tried to find it and ended up dead, and she says he can't go looking for it in their forbidden area. Yi Xuan is determined to help his brother, Jing Xuan. He finds Jing Xuan deep in training, but he's having a tough time controlling the flames. Yi Xuan, who aced his test, tries to cheer his brother up and tells him he'll do great in the future. But Jing Xuan, who's frustrated with his own struggles, gets mad at Yi Xuan and says he had it easy. Their argument ends with Jing Xuan storming off and saying he hates Yi Xuan. Yi Xuan is touched by how hard his brother works, and he sees the cuts and bruises on Jing Xuan's hands from all the training. Even though his mom warned him not to, Yi Xuan sneaks into the forbidden area of their clan. But he slips and falls down a dangerous mountainside. He barely avoids getting impaled on spikes and being hit by magma eruptions, and he finally lands safely. Then he comes across a sad sight. A bunch of skeletons that probably belonged to people who tried to find the barren flame before. Yi Xuan is out there exploring for hours in the scorching heat, and he's super tired. He's about to give up when out of nowhere, he hears this weird voice, and a fiery whip grabs his arm and burns him. Then this really strong flame demon shows up, and he's got the precious barren flame seeds. The demon can't believe that a young kid like Yi Xuan would dare to come looking for this shortcut, but he can sense that Yi Xuan has some hidden power and asks him what he's after. Yi Xuan is determined to help his brother, so he stands up to the demon. He doesn't pay attention to the demon's teasing and taps into his own special energy. He breaks free from the fiery whip and reaches into the scalding lava to grab the precious seed. The demon is totally shocked by Yi Xuan's strength and determination, and they start fighting. But in a surprising twist, 
the demon realizes how powerful Yi Xuan is and surrenders. He tells Yi Xuan that he's been waiting for the true heir of the Fire Clan and swears to be loyal to him. They merge together, and the demon promises to serve Yi Xuan faithfully. Yi Xuan finally finds the super powerful Baron Flame, which is a big source of power. A mysterious demon tells him that he needs to turn the flame into seeds to use it. Meanwhile, Jing Xuan keeps training really hard, but he's still struggling to control this fire. Then out of the blue, Yi Xuan shows up and gives Jing Xuan one of those special seeds. Jing Xuan is totally confused and wants to know what's going on. Yi Xuan tells him not to worry, and says he's about to make a big breakthrough. Later on, Jing Xuan finishes another test and can't wait to see who's moving forward. But when he doesn't see his brother's name on the list, he gets really worried. The clan's leader tells him that Yi Xuan hurt his hand and can't keep going. Jing Xuan hurries home and finds Yi Xuan working hard to refine more barren flame seeds. He starts feeling guilty about what his brother is sacrificing for him and realizes just how selfless Yi Xuan is. As Jing Xuan becomes more and more sure of his brother's good intentions, Wang and Corner Shadow show up again. Jing Xuan transforms and faces the two demons head on and they start a really intense fight. Corner Shadow hits him with a big lightning attack, but then Yi Xuan jumps in and beats Corner Shadow even though he's hurt too. While all this is happening, Jing Xuan goes head-to-head -head with Wang and fights back against his magic orbs with his fire. Wang gets ready for a big attack and Jing Xuan is determined to stand his ground. They have a huge clash and at first it seems like Jing Xuan is losing. But then he splits his power and comes back with a counterattack. He makes a ring of fire to protect himself from Wang's magic orbs and hurls it at Wang, turning him into ashes. Jing Xuan gets a big surprise when Corner Shadow grabs him and zaps him with electric shocks. Yi Xuan can't do anything but watch, feeling helpless. But then Zie shows up and freezes Corner Shadow, saving Jing Xuan. Corner Shadow tries to run away, but he's trapped in ice and eventually shatters into pieces because of Zie's power. Wang, even though he's all beat up, comes back. But Yi Xuan decides to let him go. As Wang leaves, Zie walks up to Yi Xuan and gives him a bitter slap, reminding him of the past. Zie is really mad at Yi Xuan because he thinks Yi Xuan failed to protect his sister and mother three years ago. In a flashback, we learn about Zie's sister, Yuanchu, who was sent to the Fire Clan to help Yi Xuan control his uncontrollable powers. At first, everything seems fine, but Zie is worried. Yuanchu trains with Yi Xuan under the watchful eye of his mother. As Yi Xuan works harder, Yuanchu easily stops his attacks with her water powers. But then something terrible happens. When her water gets absorbed into Yi Xuan's body, sets off a huge burst of power. Yuanshu gets thrown away and Yi Xuan goes after her, but his mother steps in and takes the flames into her own body. His mom's mind starts to fade, and it's clear that the flames inside her can't be taken out. They're taking her life, but Yi Xuan remembers the legendary Qi Lin, and it gives him the idea to go to the Aegis Tower and try to save his mom. Jing Xuan finds out about this brave mission, but Zie gets really mad at Yi Xuan for being selfish. He says it could mess up the peace they've had with the demons for a thousand years. Zie really wants to get his hands on the Qi Lin and he decides to take it for himself. He thinks Yi Xuan is too weak to finish the mission. Even though Yi Xuan begs for a chance to make things right, Zie doesn't change his mind and walks away. But then Yi Xuan gets really determined and uses his special powers to go charging at Zie with a big fiery attack. They end up in a big fight that sends them both flying backward. In the middle of all the chaos, Zie is amazed at how strong Yi Xuan still is. He realizes he needs to go back to keep the water barrier in place. So even though he doesn't want to, he gives the Qi Lin back to Yi Xuan. But he warns Yi Xuan that if they fail to save Yuan Chu, it'll mean big trouble for Zie. The two brothers then notice Huo Xing, who's from the Wood Clan. Yi Xuan sees that she can't move because of Wang's attack and decides they should take her with him on their mission. Somewhere else, the village is busy rebuilding after the demon attack. Some worried villagers talk to the chief and ask about their family members who got taken for treatment. The chief tells them not to worry and says that everyone is getting looked after outside the village. But the truth is really grim. All the villagers are locked up in a dungeon and being used for experiments to test the limits of the elixir. At the same time, the fifth elder has made an amazing recovery because of the powerful elixir. It has made him way stronger. Kuan goes up to him and asks if he can be his student. He wants to learn how to get revenge for his brother's death and protect the village. The fifth elder wants to know why Kuan wants to learn and Kuan says he felt weak during the demon attack and wants to be strong. The fifth elder agrees to teach Kuan and they walk together. Kuan brings up some unsettling rumors about the elixir being connected to villagers turning into demons during the last attack. 
He wonders about this because An took the elixir for her illness and didn't turn into a demon. Quan thinks there might be two different elixirs. Suddenly, the fifth elder attacks Quan and pins him to a wall. And he's all taken over by demonic energy. He hits Quan really hard and warns him never to talk about the elixir again. Meanwhile, An and Su Guan are lost and super tired. Su Guan comes up with a plan and shows An some special herbs he collected, which are the Qi Lin's favorite food. Instead of searching for the Qi Lin, they decide to use the herbs as bait. They get the herbs ready and end up with three different vials of them. An asks about the three vials and Su Guan explains that old texts say there are three different scents connected to the Qi Lin. They open the first vial, but it smells really bad and they both end up throwing up. So they move to a different spot and try the second vial. Surprisingly, it smells nice and lures a flower out of the water. But when Su Guan goes to check it out, a big monster shows up, and they have to run for their lives. Su Guan uses the first vial to take out the monster with one hit. Even though they're tired, Su Guan still thinks the third vial will work. They release it, but nothing happens right away. They hear some rustling in the bushes and cautiously check it out, thinking it's the Qi Lin. But when they grab a tail, they find out it's not the Qi Lin they were looking for. In a different part of the story, Hu Xing wakes up and realizes that her wounds have been taken care of. She sees the sleeping Qi Lin in front of her and briefly thinks about taking it. But she's too weak and she knows she can't get away with it without being noticed. Then Yi Xuan comes into the room and is really happy to see that she's okay. He asks for her help, and they put some medicine on his injured back. But Hu Xing can tell that Yi Xuan has a parasite infection that could mess up his powers and hurt him a lot if he tries to use them. Yi Xuan asks if there's a cure for it. But Hu Xing admits that she doesn't have the strength to help. Still, she gives him some medicine that can temporarily stop the parasite from causing problems. Yi Xuan thinks the peacock demon might be the reason for the infection, but he's determined to go on his mission. Jing Xuan really wants to go with him and says he's just as responsible for saving their mom and protecting the barrier. After thinking it over, Yi Xuan agrees to let his brother come along. Meanwhile, the second elder is searching for the Qi Lin in the Fog Hill, and he comes across a surprising scene. An is trapped by a strange stone creature. He's determined to rescue her, so he changes colors and jumps down to her. He breaks the cage and takes An with him to run away. But they quickly get surrounded by the creature. To deal with the situation, the second elder switches between his yellow form to make himself more powerful and his purple form to make himself faster. He realizes that they need help, so he tells An to grab a flare from his belt. When the chance comes, she throws the flare to call for help. The second elder starts causing destruction and chaos to fight back. An sees her moment and shoots the flare into the sky. The creature senses their call for help and tries to end the fight by capturing them. But then, the first elder and Kong arrive, surprising everyone. They're not scared of the creature. Instead, they're afraid of Mountain Store, who's really strong. Mountain Store charges at the stone creature, and it turns into a big turtle to protect itself. But Mountain Store breaks free and uses some strange goo that messes up their ability to heal. Mountain Store surrounds the turtle with his goo and hits it hard, beating it. He takes the second elder and takes away his elixir pouch. Suddenly, the first elder comes back and Kong attacks really strongly, making Mountain Store go flying. But Mountain Store's super tough body can take it. The first elder tells An to get the second elder to safety while he gets ready to fight Mountain Store. He controls his weapon with his mind. Kong joins the fight and starts hitting Mountain Store really hard, but even Kong's tough iron body isn't enough. Mountain Store keeps getting stronger and keeps hitting him. In a last-ditch effort, Kong uses chains to hold Mountain Store for a little bit, and the first elder hits Mountain Store hard. But Mountain Store gets free and uses some red goo that melts the first elder's weapon. The fight goes on and Mountain Store starts to win, eventually taking the first elder's arm. Mountain Store is getting ready to make a really strong final attack, thinking he's about to win. But then something unexpected happens. An arrow hits him and Hu Xing comes onto the battlefield. Yi Xuan uses his fire powers to trap Mountain Store. Hu Xing checks on the hurt first elder, who tells her to grab the Qi Lin when she gets the chance. Su Guan meets up with Yi Xuan and tells him to be careful because Mountain Store is really strong. Mountain Store knows that Yi Xuan beat the peacock demon, so he drinks the elixir he took from the second elder and changes into a new super strong form. The fight gets even more intense as Yi Xuan and Jing Xuan team up against him, but Mountain Store blocks all of Jing Xuan's attacks. Yi Xuan holds Mountain Store for a little bit and makes a ring of fire, but Mountain Store breaks free and throws Jing Xuan in the air. Yi Xuan has to fight Mountain Store by himself and starts to get beat up, getting thrown against a wall. Mountain Store smashes through a barrier and Yi Xuan fights back by making fire swords that go through Mountain Store's chest, even though he gets thrown to the ground. Jing Xuan comes back to the fight, and the two brothers team up to fight Mountain Store. 
but even with both of them attacking, they can't win. Jing Xuan gets thrown away and trapped. Mountain Store gets ready to hurt Jing Xuan real bad, but Yi Xuan jumps in to save him, using his own swords to block the attack. He gets hurt really bad though, the parasitic infection in his neck hurts a lot. Mountain Store is about to finish Yi Xuan off. But then something amazing happens. Yi Xuan somehow frees his brother and pushes Mountain Store away. He quickly takes care of his own injury and stops the bleeding. Mountain Store comes back hitting Jing Xuan hard. Seeing his brother in danger, Yi Xuan's hidden powers come out, and he gets rid of the parasitic thing in his body in a moment. Yi Xuan keeps hitting Mountain Store really hard, and Mountain Store's body starts falling apart. Mountain Store tries to fight back, but Yi Xuan blocks every attack. Yi Xuan is determined and gives one final super strong hit that completely burns up Mountain Store and everything around him. Everyone watching is shocked, but Yi Xuan is so tired that he falls down. After all of this, Jing Xuan seems okay. But then, the first elder grabs Jing Xuan and holds him hostage. The first elder says he'll let Jing Xuan go if they give him the Qi Lin. Yi Xuan has no choice but to agree. Huo Xing was planning to take the Qi Lin all along and she grabs it. But then everything around them starts falling apart, like something really bad is about to happen. In all the confusion, Yi Xuan asks why someone from the Wood Clan would cause so much trouble and disrupt the peace. Huo Xing starts having doubts, but the first elder reminds her that the elixir is really important for her wood powers and without it, she won't be as powerful. Huo Xing is torn inside and because of her inner conflict, everything around them starts falling apart. In a desperate move, the first elder lets go of Jing Xuan and he almost falls off a cliff. Even though Yi Xuan is really tired, he uses his whip to catch Jing Xuan and keep him safe. Yi Xuan is hanging on the edge and Su Wan hurries to help. Together, they pull Jing Xuan to safety. But Yi Xuan slips and falls into the abyss. Even though he's about to fall, Yi Xuan is grateful for saving his brother. But then something unexpected happens. The first elder comes back and hits Hu Xing from behind, taking the Qi Lin with him. Meanwhile, deep inside the foggy hill, the fire seal that was keeping things locked up starts getting weaker. Asmodeus sees this as the perfect chance to escape. He uses his incredible power to destroy the five elemental seals that had kept them locked away for a thousand years. Finally, Asmodeus is free, and the other demons are really happy about it. Asmodeus says they're going to take the world back from humans. And that's where our story ends. The moral of the story is sometimes even the most well-laid plans can go up in flames, but hey, at least you save your brother and learn to control your hidden powers while doing it.